This is the second in a series of videos about data and data handling, with specific references to the Australian Curriculum Digital Technologies. In the previous video, we looked at the concept of data from a Year 5, 6 and possibly 7, 8 perspective, where we looked at the pricing of a Big Mac and put that onto a map, which we'll look at in a sec. This video is going to concentrate more on the upper end of 7 and 8 and 9, 10 to look specifically at things like structured data and try to explain what that means, how we can achieve it, and how we can clean up data that we get from another source. So at the end of the last uh, video, we had this situation where we had plotted out the price of Big Macs in every country. So it was $4.45, and these are in US dollars to make the prices com comparable. In the Philippines, it's $2.81, and down here in the South Africa, it's $2.15. So you might think if you're a 15 or 16 year old that let's all move to South Africa because the price of Big Macs is very low. Um, and what we're going to ask is how much, how long do you have to work to earn that amount of money? Now, first of all, we're going to clear up, uh, clean up this map a little bit and make it look a little bit nicer. Now I want to change the style so that the labels actually show us the dollar price. This becomes a little bit easier now to navigate this map because we don't have to click in and close windows all the time. But it still begs the question, how much time do I need to devote to earn that? How long does it take me to earn $2.15 in South Africa compared to how much time it takes to earn four forty five dollars in Australia, all in US dollars? So I went to try to find out how much people earn in each different country. And I did a search for the list of minimum wages by country and I got a Wikipedia uh, article. Now one of the things about data is checking its authenticity and some people may challenge the idea that Wikipedia is an authentic source uh, for data and in this particular instance I want to explain why I chose uh, Wikipedia. I chose it because it gave me the data that I wanted and insofar as authenticity is concerned every one of these entries is backed up with data from a whole variety of different sources, uh, most of which are either uh, newspapers or government sources themselves. Most of them are government sources. So we can see that there's a lot of data here. We've got the country, we've got the minimum wage and an explanation for anything to do with that minimum wage. We've got the nominal price in US dollars annually that people will earn. A thing called PPP, now this crops up quite a bit um, and it's an economic term which tries to take into account not only what you earn but how much, what its buying power is and takes into account things like home mortgages and um, the, the rest, how much it costs to buy a car and all that sort of stuff. Because we're looking at it from the perspective of a year 8, 9 or 10 student um, who probably won't be buying a home anytime soon, um, I'm going to take just the US dollars. I'm not going to look at that economic um, uh, rationalisation of the number. So I'm just going to look at the uh, minimum wage as it is, and you'll see that Afghanistan earns 50 cents an hour in US uh, compared to Australia. Minimum cost is 14.56 in US dollars. Now that's that's pretty close, I reckon, to what uh, you'd earn as a, a burger jockey in um, McDonald's in Australia. We can still get a comparison, though, right, across the whole lot. If we scroll right to the bottom of this, uh, we can see, here we go, to the bottom, we can see all of those references adding to the authenticity of these data. Okay, so here we've got a whole bunch of data and we're not able to download this into uh, Excel or anything else. So we're gonna copy and paste and see how we go. It's in a table, right? So we've got the country, a bit of discussion, a few bits of pricing stuff, and when that 
value of the minimum wage was determined. And most of them are, are pretty current. You will see a few that are 2012, 2013. And that in itself provides an interesting discussion point for the students. Why is it all different? So I've found that if you're copying these things um, and you want to put them into Excel or Word or whatever, um, it's best to copy from the bottom right of the table. I don't know why, but it just seems to work a little bit more reliably. Now this is a big table, so I'm going to scroll right to the top. Shift clicking doesn't seem to work as reliably as this method. And even though it takes a little bit longer, that's okay. We'll get there. So we're getting close to the D's, C's, B's, and now we're into the A's, and there is our country. So we'll come back down and copy that. Now that's a fairly large data set. Um, what I want to do is to paste that into Word first. Now this may seem a little bit odd if we wanted to do um, our ultimate work in Excel, but pasting it into Word gives us an ability to get rid of a lot of things that we don't necessarily want. And I'm particularly interested in this flag and country, which are right alongside one another. And that may upset any referencing that I want to do in Excel. So uh, what we're going to do is to take a uh, Word document. We've already got that stuff copied to the pasteboard. I'll now paste that in. And because it's a reasonably large amount of data, it's going to take a little while for that to happen. And when it does happen, it's going to come into Word as a table in Word. Now, tables are, mm, can tend to be a bit nasty when you're dealing with data. So what I want to do is to change the structure of the data. There it is coming as... It's gone right to the bottom, which is cool. We'll scroll to the top. And there we are. So it's all come in. You beaut. Terrific. So we've now got our document in Word. As I said, to use some text editing on this because we need to clean it up. The document is structured, or the data at least is structured, but it's not structured the way we want, and it's not structured so that it's clean. And let me explain why. Across the top here, we've got a country, and then we've got all the countries down here, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Then we've got the minimum wage, then we've got these things. And really, all we want is either the annual salary or the hourly summary. It depends on how we want to compare the data. So we'll look at that later on. But here we've got everything in the right columns. But up the top here, we've got these fellas, which are sort of two columns in one. Someone has merged this to make it look a little bit better. And that's going to confuse our data analysis a little bit later on. But the biggest thing, the biggest problem is this, how we've got a graphic and then we've got a link. Uh, I just want Afghanistan. I just want the name of the country to be in there. I don't want its flag and I don't want the rest because I want to be able to look up that country so that I can find either its annual or its hourly um, wages so that I can compare that to the cost of a Big Mac. So we need to clean these data and make sure that they are structured in the way that we want them. And that's what we'll deal with in the next video. So in our next video, data three, we'll look at how we're going to use Word to clean up those data. We're going to use Word as if it's a text editor. Now on Windows, normally you would use something like Data Studio, or you, there are a number of other programs available, a number of of other applications. On a Mac you'd use something like BB Edit, but because a lot of schools and a lot of teachers won't necessarily have access to those, they are free programs, but they may not be able to download them. We're going to use Word, and in doing so we'll explore some of the powerful search and replace options that are available within Word on both Mac and Windows.